sent to your grave that which will please you when you arrive. Invest now for the sake of the hereafter inside your grave. What do you want? You want your grave to be tight, narrow, restricted with ribs over your other ribs, your legs on top of your own head. You want your grave, you want it to be wide. How do you like your bed at home? Single one or you like king size one? You like to sleep on a stick or you like to sleep on a mattress? It's not, it's just, it, it's not, not a stupid question, but it's something which you think about every night. When you get inside the bed, you check for a pillow, you check for a bed sheet. So why don't you think about now when you go to your grave, what's going to be inside your own grave? What do you expect is going to be inside your own grave? Not materially. Materially, you should already know, and that's a lesson for you in itself, that really, what's inside there? Rocks, mud, ants, insects, darkness, nobody visiting you, no life support machine, regret, and sorrow. Yes but no going back and no acting upon regret and sorrow either no acting upon that either why? because Allah Azawajal said in Surah Al-Mu'minun till when death comes to one of them the one who used to follow his own desires and false gods he will say oh Allah send me back to the dunya now so that I can do some good you know what Allah Azawajal said it's only words that he says now now it's only words it's only lip service that you can say oh Allah send me back now I'll go now Resurrect me and I'll do all of the good deeds now. Allah Azawajal, he, he says, behind this man now, who's saying these very words, send me back now. Behind him is something called a barzak. It is a barrier until he's resurrected. So when you man, he goes to his grave, does his life really end? It doesn't really end, it's only just begun. I Meaning you haven't even passed away yet, you haven't even reached your own grave yet. Your life is not even finished yet. Your life is yet to begin when you enter inside that grave. When you enter inside that grave, Munkar and Nakir and they come to you and you're asking the questions of the grave. What was your Rabb? Who was your messenger? What was your deen? That's when it really begins. And then it's too late now, it's finished now. Stay there in this state now. Regret, remorse, it doesn't change now. You can't change nothing now. That's all you will have when you're inside your grave. So you need to do those steps now to make sure you're not in that state. Have the regret, have the remorse now. Before that time it comes when you enter inside that grave. Before that time when you're resurrected. Because then there's no going back. Allah SWT has by his, by his virtue, by his grace, he has already told you in Surah al mumin this is going to be the state of man when he's resurrected. Send me back. Send me back. There's a barzak, there's a barrier. There's no going back for you now. So what are you going to do about it? Regret, remorse. I keep on repeating these words to you and to myself because there's a lot we have to have regret over. And a man who doesn't have regret is never going to change. And the change it is now. The time it is now to have that regret and remorse. You know your own self what you need to have regret over. You know your own self which that which you need to make toba over. What's preventing you? It's gone by so fast, my dear. Boy. It's gone by so fast. Only yesterday we were in the arms of our own mother. <laughs> Only yesterday we were, you know, having breakfast. We were in the school, GCSEs, A levels, and it went by so fast. Well, lucky. Where did the time it go? And where did your youth go? How quickly it passed by? Ten years it just went by. Eleven years, fifteen years it just went by. And you think to yourself, what did I really get out? Of? What did I really achieve out? Of? Where has it been spent in the way of Allah? How can I present this on a plate now? If someone says to you, you've been working eight hours, what you got to show me? Now what if, what if Allah was to take our soul right now? And we were to meet Allah's wish right now. And if you think that it's not gonna happen right now, then let's say it happens in ten years. What do you really think you what 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 splendid plan, what spectacular spectacular plan that you've got inside of your head that you think in the next ten years you're gonna be able to make up for the last twenty years which has already gone by? But that's the reality of it, my dear brothers. We're gonna leave soon. It's coming up very, very soon. You know, my dear brothers, this life really is like a hotel, my dear brothers. You know, inside that, inside that hotel, you get that bed, you get that nice painting, you get that toilet roll, that toothbrush, but none of it actually really belongs to you. There's something called a checkout time. And when it comes to that checkout time, when that checkout time it comes, and you ain't got no money, you ain't staying there. You know the differences between that hotel and when the time of a note it comes to us, no money that you got can take you back. Well, that's what Allah is saying. Behind them, 
is a barzak. You can do whatever you want inside this life right now. Wallahi, you can do whatever you want. If you want to do good nightclub, you can do nightclub. If you want to have girlfriend, you can have girlfriend. If you want to do haram here, haram there, you can have it with no account. Tomorrow there will be account, but no action now, finished. Regret, remorse, where have you got that chance? Where have you got that chance? If you got that chance, then do the action that is required to get that jannah. And there's many actions that you could do to obtain that jannah. There's certain actions that you can do that not only will you obtain the jannah, my dear brothers, but there's certain actions. And wallahi, if you've got that opportunity, take it. Because many people have been given the opportunity before and they never took it. And wallahi, they live their whole life in regret after that. There's nothing they can do to go back and take that chance. And there's some brothers I know who took that chance. They took that chance. And when they took that chance, they grabbed it. And they grabbed it at a young age. And wallahi, I'm jealous of them. Wallahi, I'm jealous of them because they got something that I desire. They got something which I know it will, will secure them for the punishment of the grave, from the pressing of the grave. And that's why the ulama, many of the ulama, they, they, when they used to describe those particular actions, they said, I don't know any other action which would, which would save you from that punishment of the grave. And you know how much there is that will take you to the grave and make you punished inside that grave. So when that opportunity it comes, take it, wallahi. And if you can't see that opportunity, then go and seek that opportunity. Wallahi is waiting for you, my dear brothers. Is waiting for you. You just need to make that movement. You just need to go forward and look for that chance. Ask Allah and ask Him to open up that door for you. Open up that door for the highest, peakest point of forgiveness and He'll give you that a chance and He'll give you that opportunity. If you're just sincere in your dua and ask Allah, oh Allah, open up that door for me. When He gives you that chance and that opportunity, take it. Don't ever look back. Don't look back at your wife. Don't look back at your children. Don't look back at the dunya. Wallahi is not worth it. Wallahi is not worth it. Take that chance and go forward. Move. Go forward and take it. And inshallah, Allah he will grant you that. And I know there's people before you and people before me who've taken that chance. So why don't we take it?